Greetings, I'm Solidus Scully, and welcome back to the Kingdom Hearts commentary, and today we go to a whole new world! Uh, by which I mean we have a choice of two, really. You can either choose one or the other. What will they be? We shall find out. But this land may be more wonderful than one may expect. <laughs> but anyway, we also have a new mode of play here. This is the Gummy Ship. As you can see, the ship is made from a whole new race of Gami. Again, it's pretty much uh, like an on-rails kind of like shooter kind of thing. Again, you float around, you blast up little Gami blocks, you travel through this very colorful version of space, and uh... Well, what is there really to say about it? you just sort of gone around in transit, just going your merry way, really. I mean, you can... I'll get into the gummy ship mechanics a little bit later on. But again, you shoot, you fly around, you just sort of on this ride to the end of the line. A lot of people do find this a bit more of a boring uh, mode of play, but again, I don't mind it. Like, I mean, it does help make the game feel like it's, you know, you're taking like a legitimate odyssey from one point of the galaxy to another, but... I don't know, there is something to be said about whether or not it generates excitement, and while it does well for being an odyssey, it doesn't really do well in excitement. Like, I mean, as you can see, some of the heartless ships Again, they will attack you, but at the same time, you can pretty easily avoid them, and even with the base ship as you're seeing here, you can pretty much ride this right to the end of the game. But, uh, we will see if that's possible as we go on. But again, there is a, a little bit more of an in-depth kind of thing in regards to the gummy ship. Like, I mean, again, as I mentioned beforehand, you can get gummy blocks and treasure chests. And of course, these are used to basically, well, pimp your ride, diggy dog. Like, I mean, you can have boosters, shields, better weapons, uh, a bunch of other shit. And again, if there's one caveat that I'm going to be making, I did say this was going to be a more complete run of Kingdom Hearts than I've ever done before, but, uh, when it comes to the gummy ship, I kind of don't give a fuck, because you don't need it to get the super duper secret ending, and, uh, well, you can pretty much get through it with a base ship, so, uh, yeah, fuck it. Anyway, we are at Wonderland. <laughs> Of course, based on the 1950, I think, Disney adaptation. So, uh, yeah. I don't think I've s No, I haven't seen this. So, uh, yeah. Unless, of course, you count American McCheese as Alice, but that's just a weird adaptation. Oh, no. That rabbit's gonna be cooked up for dinners. Actually, if I recall correctly, I was doing a bit of research into some trivia, and I don't think the rabbit actually says that in the original uh, Lewis Carroll book. So, uh, hmm, very interesting in that they're taking liberties. And uh, also, there's usually a save point there, but there's also a, a trinity, but we cannot access it, for we lack the access. But again, uh, in terms of how, you know, you know I'll say that for a little bit later. In the meantime, we gotta figure out where it's going. We're all so huge, but how did the rabbit get so small? Everything's so weird. But let's go off and take a nap on the bed. What is this? There is a secret passage. Well, there is no way we can get through there. So I guess we're gonna have to just uh, say fuck it and uh, go by the way we came. How did he get so small? Uh, no, you're simply too big. What? <laughs> that <sighs> Must you be so loud? You woke me up. <sighs> Good morning. Good night. I need a bit more sleep. Wait, <sighs> what do we have to do to grow small? Why don't you try the bottle? Over there. <laughs> There, now fuck off and let me get some sleep. Is pretty much what I assumed that the door would say, but anyway, let's just take a drink from the strange man who is a door thing. Also, I'd just like to point out the weird fallacy. Donald, Duck's, uh, Donald Duck is surprised he can talk, even though he's a talking cartoon duck. Uh, where? Well, then again, I guess it's probably strange to see any other inanimate objects talking from your perspective. Whatever, we're not going to be opening that weird door of anthropomorphic existence item things. Oh, even, maven, the existentialist things, um... Again, to talk about a little bit more about the Nocturnes and, uh... Whatever the fuck these things are called, again, they have different names, but I think these are called the Red Nocturnes. 
Again, don't use fire on them because uh, fire heals them, because that is their element. They feel comfortable. But again, in order to get some tech points, you actually get to use a blizzard on them, and uh, well, again, any tech points are good tech points, and uh, helps you out. But again, other than that, they're just basically the ankle biters at this point. Hmm, a trinity is in there. In terms of anything else though, there is a fair bit you can do in the in the bazaar room, which is this little area is called, and uh, again, there is actually a little no place for grinding, like I don't think a lot of synthesis items like really tend to list it, but uh, this is actually rather important if you want to get yourself some fury stone. Uh, what that is, I'll detail at a later date because I actually do show off the grinding part of it, but yeah. Needless to say, this room is rather important uh, if you're playing Final Mix. Court is now in session! I'm on trial? But why? Her Majesty, the Queen of Hearts, presiding. This girl is the culprit. There's no doubt about it. And the reason is... Because I say so, that's why! That is so unfair! Well, have you anything to say in your defense? Of course. I've done absolutely nothing wrong. You may be queen, but I'm afraid that doesn't give you the right to be so... so mean. Silence! You dare defy me? Hey guys, we should help her out. We're outsiders, so wouldn't that be muddling? Oh yeah, <laughs> and that's against the rules. The court finds the defendant guilty as charged for the crimes of assault and attempted theft of my heart. <gasps> Off with her head! No, no! Oh, please! Hold it right there! Who are you? How dare you interfere with my court? Excuse me, but we know who the real culprit is. Uh-huh. It's the hard one. Anyway, she's not the one you're looking for. That's nonsense. Have you any proof? Uh. Well, good going, Sora. Now we gotta play CSI. Del, Banal, Banal, uh, that guy who was also in Session 9, sunglasses with the two wire things, dinner now, whatever. I believe in terms of uh, context here, again, I haven't seen the Disney Alice in Wonderland, but I have uh, seen the book, and uh, I think this is meant to be based on, like, the person who stole all the tea cakes, or something or other. And again, uh, considering the Queen of Hearts' girth, I think it's quite obvious who stole all the tarts. Wait, did I say tea cakes or tarts? Whatever. The point is, she's fat. And like with all fatties, she needs to go on a diet. The problem is, whoever does tell her to go on a diet is uh, executed at guillotine, so, uh, yeah, we uh, ain't exactly getting anything's done to years. So, of course, naturally, we have to defend Alice, and that does also bring up another point about uh, Kingdom Hearts, so specifically with Donald and Goofy. They mentioned it earlier, but I figured I might as well mention it now. The meddling rule. Because apparently, keyblade wielders and people who can traverse to other worlds aren't meant to let on where they're really from. Uh, for some reason. I say this despite the fact that Donald and Goofy have made no attempt to shift their appearance from, you know, an anthropomorphic duck and dog into a human form, which would have been more appropriate, nor are they transmorphing Sora into a more appropriate form. So, uh, really, kind of makes the meddling point a little bit more moot, especially considering later on in the game where it seems that some people are already aware of Keyblade wielders, and even in that case, what context would the rest of the world have to go on? Like, are they well versed in, like, light and darkness, the existence of other worlds? It's been a bit of a pointless rule. Again, like, I mean, even Kingdom Hearts 1 in and of itself kind of breaks its own logic in that case, so... Yeah, I'm not really gonna harp on the rest of the series for that, but... It's pointless. Also, the Cheshire Cat's a dick. Give us a straight answer. I would strangle you and decapitate you, but your head is already off, so I guess I can only settle for... detaching your other limbs, or possibly incinerating you. It's the only way to ensure that it will be destroyed. 
Again, I didn't- I, I'm gonna bring up a point that I also mentioned beforehand in, um, in terms of the game's, like, level structure. I did mention before in Traverse Town that there's a lot of areas that are usually very boxy, but also open enough and packed with enough gameplay so that you'd uh, generally be able to, you know, get as much out of the rooms as you possibly can, despite them being very small areas, but... There are some cases where that design ethos does kind of work against it, because uh, this is meant to be a forest, but, uh, you wouldn't really tell because it looks very boxy. Again, I'm not going to harp on it too much because, again, we're still in PS2 era here, but... And I guess maybe that was kind of the point, I guess, to maybe imitate the the movie's art style a little bit more, but... I don't know. Like, I mean, this is where the boxiness aspect kind of gets a bit distracting. I will say, though, that other worlds do do a... Hehe <laughs> doo because I'm like five years old or some shit. Other worlds do generally um, make a better attempt to try and, like, make the world feel seamless with uh, the rest of the game's art style, but... Yeah, there are some areas like this that kind of make a raise an eyebrow a little bit. And anyway, to talk about what we're going to be doing here, well, aside from looking for evidence about who really ate all the tea cakes. Tarts. Jesus Christ. Whatever. Again, we're basically just on the hump for evidence, and of course in this little forest we can interact with the flowers who are very demanding little shits. They demand our potions, our ethers, and elixirs, and quite frankly, uh, fuck that. Hmm. Feet prints. Whose footprints are these? But again, basically what you're gonna do here is equip uh, whatever the flower really wants for you. You press the triangle button and it'll say, I require an elixir. And so you basically just sort of give it to the flower and it'll, it'll either give you an item or it'll uh, do something special for you. I have no idea what specifically, but hey, maybe you're into some uh, phytophiliac kind of fetishes. Hopefully not, because that's bad. And you might get a skin rash up with the sun don't shine. Uh, but I mean, on more of a serious note though, again, it is basically uh, your means in which you're, you know, getting little items, trinkets, objects. And one thing I also want to point out here, because, uh, again, I am well versed in Kingdom Hearts as a game, but yeah, there were some parts of the game where I kind of felt as if I, like, I knew exactly what to do and where to go, but the order in which I was doing them was kind of throwing me for a loop a little bit. I knew what to do and when. But uh, I kind of got a bit lost here and there, so... Yeah, I was basically just trying to jump the gun and doing things a bit more earlier than I should have, so... Yeah, that's, uh, it's kind of on me, really. But anyway, we now have Blizzard, which is fan fucking tastic I mean, up until this playthrough, really, I never really found myself using Blizzard as much as I did, but... I don't know, I guess maybe it's just the fact that I'm doing a commentary, but I wanted to kind of varietize my magic spells and just get as much use of them as I can, which is... Again, where I bring up the whole uh, customization thing. Like, I mean, you can only have three spells to your person, which is generally at this point uh, Thunder, Blizzard, and Fire. But again, you get some more tastier spells to play with later on in the game, and kind of wish you had a few more shortcut keys to use it with. But then again, I suppose they couldn't map it to Circle because, you know, you jump using that. But then again, Kingdom Hearts 2 also did that, so I don't really know what to say at this point. And again, this also comes with the caveat that you have to equip it into your shortcut menu because you can't hand a potion to the flower from the menu for some reason. And again, this isn't actually the only time that you uh, do this. There is actually uh, a, a heartless creature that requires you to, you know, do something similar to this in uh, regards to some synthesis stuff, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it for the cleanup video. But again, it's... To talk a little bit more about Kingdom Hearts' mild puzzle elements, again, as you saw before with, you know, Sora, uh, growing larger, then eating the apple to grow shorter, then knocking the trees around and getting a puzzle to unlock a few more platforming places. Again, that's what I'm talking about when it when I'm saying that a room tries to get as much gameplay as it possibly can out of you. Like, I mean, it's just very small, mild, and nothing that you really need to think too hard about, but... Again, you are thinking about what you're doing, and you are having to constantly think about exactly what way in which you plan your route. So, in that sense, I do actually really like Wonderland as a world. Like, I mean, it's got enough visual spice to feel distinctive, it does... I'd imagine, like, generally mimic the sort of movie that you would have been watching in the 1950s, or the 1980s, the 1990s, the 1970s, and the 1960s, not the 2000s. Because that was when American McCheese's Alice was there, and that was cool. But then in the 2010s, where Tim Burton's movie pissed everyone off and they didn't want to watch it, and the 2020s, I presume, uh, when people want to watch it... I have no idea what the fuck I was going to uh, do it on anymore. Again, another thing to talk about the platforming, I will say that the platforming in Kingdom Hearts 1 is a little bit pish because of the fact that... Again, uh, well, for one thing, uh, characters like Goofy like to jump and get in your way. 
But at the same time though, like, I mean, you do generally have enough reach to get where you need to go, and Sora is pretty reliable at grabbing ledges, but there is also a factor of, uh, well, you know, sometimes his big feet will make him slip off the edge and uh, can't quite judge the distance, and yeah, that gets a bit frustrating. And again, this was me trying to think like three steps ahead here when I uh, needed to get all the evidence beforehand. Again, I was thinking that you could push the boulder out of the way or you could maybe get rid of it, but uh, no, the, the Cheshire Cat does that, so... Whoopsie daisy, Scully made us stupid! But again, like, I mean, to go once again back on the platforming, like, again, there's nothing at all complex about what you need to jump to. It's basically just jump to platform A, to platform B, to platform C, to platform F, to platform E. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing anymore. But again, it's simple enough that you don't really need to worry about it too much. But again, when you slip off that platform, woohoo, it becomes a pain in the butt. I will cut this down if, uh, need be, but I don't worry. I should be fine, it's just all part of the experience of figuring out where you need to go. I think the only other world this really tends to happen to me with is, um, Agrabah, but I mean, apart from those two examples, this Kingdom Hearts run is pretty concise. And also, if you could notice, right behind that, uh, little shrubbery, which we can't whack for some reason, yeah, there's a secret pathway behind there. And I believe that's one where you unlock the Keyblade of this world. I mean, usually you do unlock Keyblades by the time you, uh, finish a world, but not for Wonderland for some reason. You can't really get it- I think not until you get the White Trinities, actually, which is a pretty late game. But then again, I, the Keyblade you do get from this world is pretty good in regards to MP, so... Yeah, I guess that's probably part of the reason why they hit it down here. And I suppose to also detail that from Keyblades from other worlds, which you can uh, acquire for... In terms of like a lot of main uh, canon stuff, I'm mainly going to be sticking with the Kingdom Key and uh, Donald Goofy's basic loadouts, or... Uh, you know, for story purposes and all that kind of stuff. I will show off some of their equipment later on, but uh... Yeah, for the time being, we're sticking with the Kingdom Key, because it's... It's Sora's Keyblade. It's one of his own. It's his Keyblade. Or is it? Perhaps it belonged to somebody else. Somebody Sora loves, like his boyfriend. But that theory, I'm sure it could never possibly belong to him. Uh, but in any case, again, you're meant to be getting like, uh, four, four to five packages of evidence. I think you need at least three in order to present it to the Queen and, you know, make sure that Alice is not gonna have her head decapitated and served up for dinner in a fine cuisine of cannibalism and whatever fucked up shit that Wonderland is usually known for. Uh, but again, it's... Again, like, I mean, I don't, I don't think it really changes all that much because, again, well, you know what, you'll find out. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't quite end the same way it did in the book, where the cards all jump on Alice, and then she wakes up and, uh, is saved by a deus ex machina, or deus ex machina, whatever's the proper pronunciation. Again, like, I mean, uh, I really should have cut this down, but don't worry, we will eventually figure it out in the end, because, uh, fuck it. I think the only bits of evidence I really miss is, um, yeah, the one right over there, like over on the little stove thing. There is actually a lot more to figure out in regards to the Bazaar Room, because, like, I mean, you you do kind of explore Wonderland, you know, uh, interact with certain objects, make them phase out of existence, and then just, um, you know, have them show up down there. Uh, generally, like, a lot of the 2D objects, you know, that you're seeing right down there on the floor, that's generally what you're going to be interacting with, making them come into existence, and, you know, just... Uh, seeing them interact with the world. But again, that's, uh, you know, all for you to explore in your own time, really. Oh, I thought it, oh, next part, I guess. I was thinking I was gonna show you off, um, what the... Uh, bloody fuck, what was it called again? Uh, where the, um... I think they're called the Giga Heartless, but, yeah. We'll save that for the next part, I presume. In the next 10,000 years. Again, I'm pretty sure at this point I'm just looking for one last scratch of evidence because at this point, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if I've ever actually gotten all the evidences in one uh, go, but then again, like, if you have at least three, you do have a decent chance of at least being able to get the correct guess because, uh, well, let's just say Wonderland's justice system is, uh, well, insane, which is apropos, except not really, because our justice system in the real world is insane, so I suppose, uh, Wonderland's is sane by comparison. In the Matrix.
Oh yeah. Again, the, this is pretty much me saying, fuck it, I give up, let's do a walkthrough, but... Then I said, fuck it, and let's just show the evidence, because, uh... Detective Sora, attorney at war, is, uh, good enough to do this. And just having one final interaction with Alice. Also, uh, apparently the Queen is uh, on putting her on trial for stealing her heart, even though she still has it, in terms of her physical organs and the soul, because she hasn't been corrupted by the Heartless, and has absolutely nothing to do with the, uh, the Legion of Doom that we saw previously. And yeah, that's pretty much what they're doing. Like, they bring up two bits of evidence, they flip it around, and you basically just sort of have to guess uh, which one is which. But again, if you, the more evidence you have, the more likely you're going to guess what the real culprit is. And, uh, spoiler alert, it's exactly what you think it is, and you can only pick one, because, uh, she was elected to lead, not to read, number three. It was a soldier. Well, we're gonna see how this trial ends. I'm Solid Scullies, keeps its new medals, and I'll see you next time for CSI Kingdom Hearts Edition.